English nerd herders, listen up! Welcome back, I am Captain Xavier, and a question that occasionally gets asked is, Captain of what? Well, I am the commanding officer of a company of mercenaries known simply as The Crew. I'm also co-founder of MDLM Securities, which is a private security company, which essentially means we're mercenaries. We originally formed in the realms of Avalon, which is a medieval recreation group, and we had a very piratical theme about us. We didn't exist in any official capacity. We were not a household or a guild or anything that existed on paper or in the rolls, which we liked because it gave us a degree of freedom, and they didn't like because it gave us a degree of freedom. Um, as I said, we were practically based. We had a code that was based on old pirate codes, things like all members of the crew have an equal vote in all affairs of the moment, all members of the crew have an equal share of all uh, bounty taken or paid, uh, things like that. And membership was entirely voluntary. There were no oaths of fealty. There were no contracts signed. Uh, there were requirements to join, uh, but you could leave at any time you wanted, and some people occasionally did, but we more picked up a lot of people. And we, we branched out a great deal. Originally, we were within the realms of Avalon, but we eventually spread to other medieval recreation groups, the, the Empire of Adria. We've done stuff with the SCA. We also then started doing stuff with Nerf, with uh, HVZ. We also, I do have members who have done Airsoft. Uh, we've also done things with, at Afterworlds and various other locations. We also have done things in video games occasionally. Anywhere where we had the opportunity to work as a squad or to hire ourselves out as mercenaries, we have done so. And it's been a lot of fun. We've also done uh, worked at Renfairs as their military. We have also guest lectured at colleges where we taught things like um, Roman Legion versus Greek Phalanx in a practical way, where we, we took the class, split them up, half of them became a legion, half of them became a phalanx, and we made them fight. Um, and that, all of that has been a lot of fun. And that has always been the goal, to make the game, whatever game we're playing, more fun by adding that aspect to it, that military aspect, because... We were a very militaristic organization. We had uniforms, we marched in formation, we had officers, NCOs, we camped in a military camp, we had f tactics and all of that. And all of that, one, was a lot of fun. It was neat to be a part of that and have the uniforms and, you know, and all that. But it also made us far more valuable as a mercenary company because that kind of discipline and organization acts as an exponential force multiplier. We could, we could and did defeat armies considerably larger than ours. Uh, because we were simply a better force. And it also taught us all a great deal. It was always wanting to learn more. All crew members were required to have some form of marketable skill, whether it be leatherworking or sewing or armoring or you know, weapon repair or siege engine, something. They were required to, to pick up at least one skill that they could use and to teach at least one skill. And... It really had a huge impact on all of our lives. I've had a number of crew members who, when they were much younger, they joined when they were 14 or 15 or sometimes younger than that, um, come to me when they were much older and, and thank me for what the crew did for them as a person, you know, teaching them discipline and responsibility and teaching them skills and, um, and, and all of that. And I've also had a number of parents who came to me and thanked me for the, the very noticeable difference that we had made in their son or their daughter um, they were now, you know, more respectful and more responsible and doing better in school. And if, if, you know, they asked them to wash the dishes, they just, they did it. They didn't question it. Um, and that's something I'm very, very proud of. And it, it's helped me immeasurably as well. The crew has been a huge part of all of our lives. And that is ultimately the goal of the auxiliary is to make the game and the hobby more fun for you guys. Uh, by allowing you to, to become part of something bigger and, and be involved in whatever I'm doing when I'm at an event, there are... Four major events this year that I'm going to be going to. Uh, Jared's Epic Nerf Battle, West vs. Zombies, End War, and Ragnar Oktoberfest. And in all of those, I will be acting in some capacity as Captain Xavier, leading troops um, you know, in one form or another. And anybody who wants to come and, and be a part of that, be under my general command structure, that is the auxiliary. I will hopefully at some of those have some of my regular troops, but for the most of them, it's just going to be me. And so having... The auxiliary show up will allow me to do things that I couldn't do either, which is going to make it so much more fun for me. And so I'm hoping to give that back. There has always been auxiliary within the crew because we had people who either didn't want to become full voted members or didn't have the opportunity because they lived too far away or they were part of something else. But anytime we were at an event, they always came, hung out with us and fought with us. 
and so that's why we formed the auxiliary so that we could acknowledge that as you know because that was very important to us to have you know additional troops and you know the additional camaraderie and all of that and so that's what we're going for the neat thing about the auxiliary is that it you will get out of it what you put into it and it is a hugely nebulous concept there is no this is exactly how the auxiliary is this is how the auxiliary has to dress and you have to have this training and this loadout there will be absolutely none of that beyond having the badge that I've created, which looks like this. Which is, of course, a obvious ob alteration of the crew's badge, which looks like this. And I would ask that if you're going to be acting as an auxiliary, you have this on you somewhere. I've had a friend design a 3D printable patch that's two inches. You just add um, self-adhesive Velcro to the back and paint the insignia in white on the front. And you've got a patch that you can put on your gear. Um, you can put that on whatever you want. You can paint it on a helmet, put it on a headband, put it on an armband, put it on your vest, put it on, you know, wherever you want, on the side of your blaster. As long as something on, on you indicates that you are a member of the auxiliary, that is as far as the uniform goes. Uh, other than that, you can have whatever loadout, whatever uniform, whatever gear you want. Um, if you are part of a, a squad that has their own uniform with their own insignia, fantastic. Add this on in, in addition. Um, and you're good to go. Um, as far as what you'll be doing, that's another thing that's largely up to you and will be based on your preference, your skills, your loadout, your training. Um, and it will be my job as the commanding officer to best utilize you. Uh, if you are, you know, heavily geared up and you're, you're a veteran and you know how to hold the line with professional soldiers, then yeah, I'll put you in the line, on the firing line. If you're a small kid with no training and a maverick, I'm going to put you in the, the Ghost Recon and have you running around hiding in bushes and scouting and bringing back information and, and whatever else. Um, if you're someone who's a non-combatant, that is a hugely valuable asset, actually. Um, I'll cover you in magazine holders and give you a rucksack full of magazines and just have you reload people, just handing out full magazines and collecting empty ones. Um, if you don't want to do that, I need water bearers like you wouldn't believe. Uh, in events like this, people get dehydrated. If you don't have a camelback, and even if you have a camelback, you're going to run out. I need people to just go around and hydrate the troops. Uh, within the crew, water bearers are one of the most powerful individuals. Uh, no member of the crew can refuse water more than once at an event. Even me as captain, I can only refuse water once when told to drink by a water bearer. Uh, and even then, you have to have a really good reason. You don't have to you know, drain the bottle or gulp or anything, just a sip minimum. But if a water bearer tells you to drink, you drink. Um, and that is something that's very, very valuable. For people who don't want to be on the field at all, people who watch the gear, that's incredibly valuable. Um, someone to set up and operate a, a snack table for people who you know, can come up and get chips or pickles or whatever else to you know keep yourself hydrated and keep salts in and, and all of that. Um, that is also incredibly valuable and useful. So whatever you are good at, whatever you have, I will find a way to make you valuable and, and more valuable than you would have been otherwise. And to help you have a lot more fun, because being part of the you know a military structure is really really exciting in these kind of situations. Uh, but for people, but it isn't for everybody. Not everybody has it in them to be a soldier, and I understand that. So for those who don't want to be in formation, marching, and all of that, we have what we refer to as feral squad, which are the 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 berserkers, the crazy charge and just you know try to take out as many as you can before you get taken out. You know, to soften them up for the, the heavy infantry to come in behind. Or the guys we send to flank them after we get their attention that just shatters their line completely. Things like that. I will find a way to, to use you to your, your best and to make the game more fun for you. That is my job as the commanding officer. The only real obligations that I have for you guys, other than having the patch on you somewhere, and following orders... Um, I mean, if you're not going to follow orders from the officer corps, what's the point of being the auxiliary? Um, is fair play. Um, I will not have the auxiliary become known for not taking their hits or not taking their tags or, you know, or what have you. Is I, I do expect you to play honestly and honorably, because there's no point otherwise. And you are, while unofficially affiliated with the crew, you are affiliated with us, and if you play badly it reflects badly on me and, and the crew in general and I simply will not have that and that is one of the few things that would get you drummed out of the auxiliary um, is you know not playing fairly um, but a lot of the other things are very up in the air and you know like I said you'll get out of it what you you put into it and that's really going to be uh, a whole lot of fun 
Um, there is going to be a Facebook page that will be created specifically for the Auxiliary. It will be public. Anybody can join, even if you don't then become an official member of the Auxiliary, if you just want to show up and hang out and look at things. Um, the uh, insignia will be available, as will the file, so that you can print this yourself. Uh, that is where I will post training videos and additional addendums and, and things. Um, if I'm going to an event, there will be sp uh, auxiliary-specific videos that get created about how, I know, what squads are being created, what information I need from you, how to get a hold of me so I know where you're going to be, if I can, meeting locations, and, and things like that. Because the whole point is to make it run more smoothly. Uh, so the more we can get organized beforehand, the better. Um, you do not have to actually be able to an attend an event at all to become a member of the Auxiliary. Uh, you are perfectly welcome to sign up and, and be a member on some far-flung continent that's never going to be able to attend any of those events. That is perfectly fine as well. Um, there are no obligations of actual participation, which is neat. And I've had people contact me from England and uh, in other countries going, we have a squad, we're organized, we want to become part of the Auxiliary. We're never going to make it to the States, but we want to be part. Awesome. Um, I have larger plans, potentially for the future, that things like that will become very, very useful and valuable. Um, I do also, hopefully, eventually plan to actually create a roles of members um, that has things like, you know, their name, their location, events they're going to, equipment they have, um, preferred style, training, whatever else. Um, that's going to be a lot further down the line, probably, but eventually I hope to get that organized. Uh, but the first event I'll be going to will be and, um, Jared's Epic Nerf Battle. And that one isn't really, there aren't really goals. It's really divide the two sides up and they charge into the middle of the field and shoot at each other for eight minutes and then separate and repeat uh, with various themes. One will be rival only, one will be jolt only, one will be electronic blasters only, one will be springers only, one will be you know everybody versus the guests. Um, which I'm not a guest this year, which is cool, because it actually means I have more freedom. <laughs> um, but, if all the auxiliary end up on one side, and we're all running in as a squad, and, you know, do formations, it's not going to make any difference to the outcome, because there are no winners or losers at Jared's Epic Nerf Battle, but it will be so much fun. And that's the goal, to make the game more fun. So, that is the, the pitch for the auxiliary. Hopefully, it, uh... Sounds like something you're interested in, or if you have further suggestions, further ideas, requests, comments, concerns, um, go ahead and let me know. Uh, you can contact me either in the comments, um, on the Facebook page, you can email me at captain.xavier.nerf um, to discuss, and uh, hopefully this will be a lot of fun. So, hope to see you on the field. Thank you for watching. <laughs>